Welcome to It's Happening in Grand Prairie. I'm Georgia Clemson, and I have two wonderful guests here to get us started today. Welcome, Chief Dye. Thank you. And yes. welcome to your guest as well, Dr. Anderson. Thank We're you. going to ask Chief. Chief, get us started today. Tell us exactly why you're here today. Well, uh, Council Member Clemson, thank you for having us on today to talk about a very important topic. So, as you recall, about eight years ago, we were the first police department in the Metroplex to start a medication disposal program. And that is so important to try to keep our community safe from, from unwanted or unneeded drugs in the home. Uh, that, that program has been very successful. Uh, it is open uh, seven to seven, uh, seven days a week. So 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Any day of the week, you can come to the Grand Prairie Police Department, drop off your unwanted uh, prescription medications into our kiosk, and then we properly dispose of those. So just been a, a fantastic program, and, and we've had the opportunity this year to create a new partnership. And yes, and I know that partnership is like a partnership made in heaven because it was perfect. It, it has, it, it has been. Us. You know, we're very uh, dedicated to community policing uh, here at the Grand Prairie Police Department. That's one of our, our really main tenets of service delivery. So Dr. Anderson and I were able to meet and she's got a fantastic program mm -hmm. called Drop the Drugs and it, it meshed perfectly with our GPPD medication disposal program. Mm -hmm. We've had some great results together. Uh, that I'll let Dr. Anderson talk about in a minute, but it's been a fantastic partnership that really exemplifies when you partner with your stakeholders and work with your community, it's a force multiplier. Yes. And uh, really, I'm really so appreciative of Dr. Anderson and what she's really doing to try to keep our community and our kids uh, safe. Yes, it's wonderful. Dr. Anderson, we're so pleased to have you today and this partnership it's so great for, for both entities. So tell us a little bit about your program and how it works with our program. Absolutely, I'm happy to do so. And it, it's been not only a strategic partnership, but a productive partnership. And those are two different things. I, I couldn't be more thrilled as a fairly new resident to Grand Prairie, but every community that I've lived in, I've gotten involved as an, as an advocate, as a healthcare provider. I've been a dentist for 30 years. Uh, and I can say unequivocally this partnership with the Grand Prairie Police Department has been one of the best in my experience and I thank them. I did not know when I started Drop the Drugs back last fall that uh, Grand Prairie Police Department had a drop-off site and that it had been ongoing for eight years. That was just kind of a happy serendipity. But I did know that not only do we have an opioid crisis, and everyone's aware of that, and we now understand that it's a brain addiction, that it's a disease, and we're more sympathetic and empathetic about how we treat people who are addicted. Not everyone knows, however, that we have a broader substance abuse problem. And with so many children being at home right now because it's summer break, toddlers and teens, it's particularly important that their parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles are aware that common household drugs, over-the-counter drugs, as well as prescription drugs pose a danger, pose a threat to their family and simply should not be left out on kitchen counters or the nightstand like I used to do because uh, abuse taken in high doses by a teen to get high or just a toddler playing around and wanting to take some of the candy, the cough syrup, however it's been described, can lead to liver damage, uh, heart damage, memory loss, unconsciousness, and death. So I started drug the drugs as a grandmother, I gotta admit, I, I was a little selfish, <laughs> and a cancer survivor, understanding pain and how it can drive you to do things you wouldn't normally do, to educate consumers of the need to secure drugs in the home. I'm not saying throw everything away. You have prescriptions that you need, but don't just leave them out for easy access. And then to prevent uh, overdose uh, poisoning, you can also decrease the amount of drugs in your home. We tend to stockpile them or just, I, I had some that were, I was serious, went back five, seven yes. years when I became aware of this. You can dispose of those uh, at the Grand Prairie uh, Police Department. They have a kiosk and it's not only available, but it's also free and anonymous. And I want to make sure people understand that they don't have to worry about someone asking for ID or where did you get these drugs or what have you been doing with them. And so by decreasing access, decreasing our uh, 
unused and leftover drugs in the home and by securely storing the drugs that we do need, we can eliminate uh, potential addiction, we can prevent overdose and poisoning, and we can make our homes and communities safer. So those are the objectives of Drop the Drugs and people can learn more at dropthedrugs.org. Uh, and then I'll just add, if you can't get by, if you're not mobile, you can go on our website at dropthedrugs.org and they actually have, I just learned about these recently, mm -hmm. free postage paid mailback envelopes that will hold quite a bit of uh, drugs that are long, no longer needed. Just they'll mail them to you, you put them in there, send them back. So there's really no excuse. You've made yeah. it very accessible, both of you, and making it available there at uh, in Grand Prairie. Well, and Council Member Clemson, we need to know what's in our home. Yes. Whether it's ours, uh, our family members, or our guests, know what's in your home. And the minute that those are no longer needed, those, those medications, get rid of them. A child may stumble across them and poison themselves. Mm -hmm. They may be abused. They may be, be taken and given away at school. There's so many bad consequences. And now, because these programs are so convenient, mm -hmm. there's really no excuse. And then we also need to think about our water supply. A lot of people are good about getting rid of those unwanted or unneeded medications, but they'll flush them down the toilet. Yes. And that, that really uh, is, is toxic to our water supply. Mm -hmm. So there's an environmental component to this as well. Okay. And, and I'll tell you, uh, the Drop the Drugs partnership has been extremely successful. We took in a lot of pounds of unwanted medications uh, last year, but I, wanna, I want Dr. Anderson to tell you what we've done since she's come on board and partnered with us. I think it's really amazing uh, what's yes. happened, the results. Good. Dr. Anderson, tell us what some of the results are. Well, I think everyone is aware that uh, twice a year the DEA sponsors a national Take Back Day, which is ongoing and has been successful. And last September, the Grand Prairie Police Department took back over 300 pounds of drugs, which is significant when you think about the size of a peel, how teeny that is. But we began working together. We did some co-branding, marketing. They worked very, very hard to make people aware of the program. And during the last take back, they took in over 900 pounds wow. of uh, over-the-counter and prescription drugs that were no longer needed, triple the previous take back. And, and we'd like to see that duplicated. This program mm -hmm. has worked together so well. And we're just trying to make others aware of it. And we'd like to see other partnerships and see it duplicated in communities across the state, across the country. And you know, that's the community advocacy and proactiveness which Dr. Anderson on her own time came forward with, but that shows you the power of force multiplying. Mm -hmm. You know, we tried to get the word out and we still do as much as we can at the police department, but now with the community partner, we almost tripled our results. So we'll never know how much that helped, but we do know that's less in the water supply, that's less that had the opportunity to get misused, abused, or or turn into poison. So I'm just so thankful for great citizens like Dr. Anderson and great leaders uh, like you in our city to, to be able to do this for our city. It just, it makes us all feel like we're really making a difference. Uh, it's, you know, the number one, I believe, cause of child deaths yes, is poisoning, is. right, Dr. Yes, Anderson? It so it's a real problem, uh, not just with what we see with the opioid and, and abuse crisis, but in other areas as well. So if someone does have to take drugs and have have prescription drugs in their home, what's a safe way to keep them? They can, um, they can buy inexpensive lock boxes and put them in there. They can uh, get child-proof safety caps and keep them out of sight. It's easy to leave them out because it's convenient, uh, but that convenience can be deadly yes. and it can lead to addiction. You, you think about all the people who come into your home, uh, contractors, people painting, people exterminating. I had someone in my house yesterday. If someone has a brain disease and they're subject to addiction, it's so easy to take a few pills. You, you don't even think about it, but we, we become unwitting drug suppliers in our own home. So ideally lock them up and keep them at, at the very least, put them up high, out of reach, and out of sight. I was just thinking about uh, so many the, of the elderly people that we have in our families, our own families, probably have quite a collection yes. that we need to go mm -hmm. through or help them go through. Absolutely. And then, where do we take them? Yeah, in Georgia, uh, mm -hmm. any, any day of the week, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Grand Prairie Police Department. As Dr. Anderson uh, mentioned, you, we can get a, you can have a mail-in bag, or if they're immobile, call the police department. We'll come to their home and pick those up for them. We'd be glad to do that. No now, excuses. You can, <laughs> they, can, no excuses. <laughs> they can have curb service. They can bring it up there. 
or they could mail it in. So no yes, excuses. Yes, Absolutely. Well, what a fantastic program. Thank and thank you. you for all you and your family do to serve our community. Yes. You're setting a fine example for all of us. Well, thank you so much, and God bless you both. Thank you. And we'll be right back. In need of repairs for your home but falling short on cash? Have no fear, the city of Grand Prairie is here. Introducing the new Building Blocks Neighborhood Rebate Program. Select Grand Prairie residents may qualify for a rebate of up to $5,000 on home improvements. Enhancements from fence installment and tree trimming to exterior painting and landscaping are available. See if you meet the requirements by going to gptx.org slash building block. It's all part of an initiative to keep Grand Prairie beautiful. Welcome back and welcome to our next very special guest, Mr. Bob. Fitch. Welcome, Bob. Well, hello, Georgia. Thank you Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you here. And for those who do not know, um, Bob is an outstanding photographer, an award-winning photographer, and he also presented us with the Grand Prairie Reporter online for 11 years. 11 years, yes. So uh, we're so glad to have you. Uh, <coughs> now, this is bittersweet. We're thankful that you're here. <laughs> But you're retiring from some of your duties, aren't you? That's correct. I've decided that after 11 years that uh, uh, to have a little more manageable pace in my life, I've decided to hang up the Grand Prairie Reporter and uh, move on to something else. And uh, I've managed to uh, uh, get a volunteer position with the media department in the city of Grand Prairie and going to do a little photography work and still document some of the Goings on in in the city. I'm looking very forward to it. Very yes. much forward to it. Yes, and so. it's been so great to be able to see the things that you post. Uh, since we do not have a newspaper anymore and haven't had for a long yeah. time, but <clears throat> it's so wonderful to be able to see the things that were happening in Grand Prairie, and we hope that will continue at least to, to some extent, but uh, under a different name perhaps. But um, I've always admired your uh, photography. Well, thank you. And I know to be able to capture some of that, you had to get up either at the crack of dawn or before the crack of dawn or get up at midnight. I, I don't know how you did that, but you have some of the most fabulous photographs, and especially in Grand Prairie, of the epic of rainbows. Tell us, uh, tell us about the life of a photographer, uh, the way you the way you handle that. Well, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my Texas allergies are giving me this, <laughs> and I apologize. That's fine. Uh, as I say, if you're a photojournalist, you have no life. Your life becomes your your, your job or, or yes. whatever it is. And uh, I don't mind one bit in this world getting up at, at two o'clock in the morning or, or getting up at the crack of dawn or, or staying up late or fighting the cold. It's just what I love to do because when I come home, I have that image, and that's that's what I try to capture. Uh, uh, sometimes things don't work out as well as you would like it to far to, but uh, you, you still you still had an enjoyable day at it. Uh, the the one at the epic uh, that I took with the moon recently, and I know you had talked about that. I waited <clears throat> all morning long to get that for the moon to get just right, and just by the time it got right, clouds moved over it. So, oh man. <laughs> so, so. It doesn't always work doesn't out, work out no. but then there's some that just are, as I said, award-winning. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of of your photographs that have been recognized by different entities. Well, I, I compete quite regularly in international exhibitions uh, through the Photographic Society of America who sanctions these, and there's usually a, a several of them a month, and I pick the ones that I want to. And uh, I'm primarily in the photojournalism category, although I have branched out into some landscape photography and uh, uh, black and white photography, which is probably my love. That's where I started, is in black and white. And uh, <clears throat> I like to say I still compete in that, and uh, it's, a, it's a ranking system of uh, how many pictures you have and how many get accepted into a, an exhibition. <clears throat> so, that, so that's uh, pretty amazing. And yeah. I love to look at your work, and I know it's important to you to document events, isn't it? It is, and that's one of the reasons that I'm trying to wanted to remain on it. Photographing in Grand Prairie was to uh, capture some of the events and the history of this of the city to keep it it going. 
as you mentioned earlier, um, we have no newspaper and we haven't had one in years. And most cities don't, our size, do not have a newspaper any longer. But we still need to, I feel, document uh, the history that goes on, the events that go on, so that generations from now we'll still have a, a recorded record of what, what occurred yes, in Green Prairie. Yes, so very important, that history, recording <clears throat> that history, whether it's in photographs or journalism, mm -hmm. as you said. and. Um, one of your very special photos for me is the one you took of my mom, Miss Ruthie Jackson, on her 90th birthday. And she was there, and you could see all of her pins, all of her jewelry. <laughs> it was just so perfect, and I really do appreciate that as well. I still have that as well and enjoy that. Um, now, Bob, we are cha you're changing your, <coughs> um, your schedule at least. Right and what you're doing, and I know that should give you more time for family and travels, because you enjoy travel, don't you? I, I do, I, lo I love to travel. And I love road trips in a car. That's tell like us about your most recent one. Well, I'm sort of a train buff, uh -huh. and recently the uh, Union Pacific restored the, the world's largest uh, steam locomotive, and it was making its Midwest tour, and we chased it from uh, Omaha, Nebraska, up into Iowa and I took uh, a lot of photographs of it and uh, uh, really, really enjoyed it. It was a really wonderful time for my wife and I that we, we got to fight the crowd and there were thousands of people following this and, and doing the same thing as I was doing to get photographs of it. We, we really had a wonderful, wonderful time. And you had that. some magnificent photographs yeah, as well you. of that. And wasn't your wife a good sport to go with you? <laughs> yes, she is. She's very <laughs> much good sport. Uh, I saw where, uh, the <laughs> photo of where she was shopping for yeah. some items, at, sort of as her reward for going. <laughs> and I, the caption was that after the, the trip that we chased the train that I was going to let her buy anything she wanted to in the store. Oh, so. That's fabulous. <laughs> I, I wish Dan would make me that deal. <laughs> well, yeah. Yes. Uh, one of the things you learn in being married a long time. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. That's it. <laughs> well, we do uh, love having you in Grand Prairie and the things that you have done in the past. And we're so thankful that you're going to stay and be documenting things as well, just in a different capacity. Yes. Well, thank you. I, as, uh, I mentioned it to somebody that um, I don't go this go away this easily. You're still going to see me around, and people are still going to see me around with a familiar camera in hand and black hat on. So. Now, has any uh, uh, or have any of your family members shown an interest in photography? My one grandson did, but he moved on to something else. So. Oh, he's already moved on. No, already moved on. Well, but, that's all right. Somewhere right. along the way, there will be another photographer that will uh, have that same love and talent for that. I didn't take it up until I was an adult. I, I had an interest in it early in life, but I didn't yes, do, I, pursue it I until was, I was an adult. I thought you had mentioned one time that uh, you... How long have you been doing this seriously? Oh, my goodness, I don't, I don't know. But you were an adult. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> you had another profession before <laughs> this, correct? That's correct, that's correct. Mm -hmm. I actually retired from the uh, Postal Service in the law enforcement branch of the Postal Service. So. And then you had this wonderful talent, <laughs> and I'm so glad you have shared it with Grand Prairie. You've been such a blessing, and I know you will continue to be. And I want to, on behalf of everybody in Grand Prairie that has enjoyed that, I want to thank you and uh, look forward to many more great things from you. Thank you. I look forward to it myself. All right. Thank you, Bob, mm -hmm. for being with us. Sure thing. And thank you all for joining us today. I'm Georgia Clemson reminding you that it's happening in Grand Prairie.